everyone, and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. This is episode 30. I almost said Dragon Age Infinite for some reason. Um, this game is just so massive. My brain just went Dragon Age Infinite. <laughs> this is episode 30. Last time we did Demands of the Cune, and we chatted with uh, a lot of companions back in Skyhold once again. Some really good stuff, some great little moments. We've got Cullen continuing to struggle with the uh, lack of lyrium, and we've said, don't do it, man. You, you're better than this. He's going to struggle to overcome his addiction, but maybe he can do it, hopefully. That, my man, I believe in him. We also had some great uh, Iron Bull interactions on the demands of the Qun quest while also slaying a dragon together and we celebrated by drinking uh canary piss and it was great uh we are now going to summon the war council for a mission or two as is the usual dragon age episode beginning and we'll see what we have in store for us today okay thanks from a chantry sister Inquisitor Lavellan, I have joined my sisters in Denerim's Chantry. It is grander than the Chantry in my former village. I believe I can do some good here. I founded a charity to, uh, to aid those the breach and the fade rifts impacted. I tell all who ask that the Inquisition made this possible. Make his blessings upon you, Sister Paulette. Nice. Hard in Hightown, a worthy dwarf. Nightingale, we removed the dwarf from his home in Hightown. He had another manuscript in progress, which we burned, doused in acid, and threw into the sea. Okay. Apparently, he has a beef with Varric for setting up the champion of Kirkwall with another runecrafter. He ranted about better beards and true dwarves, and then declared himself the greatest writer in Thetis, at which point Fletcher laughed so hard she started choking. That dwarf is a menace. And he claims he didn't send a note to Skyhold. Cooper. Interesting. So we've found we've found the, the copycat over here. Even though the, there were, a note was not sent to Skyhold by him. He hated that, that we were going with Sandal as our runecrafter. Enchantment. He doesn't even have a beard. Uh, we got a Bianca grip. Nice. Worth it. I think that was the that's the completion that wraps up that storyline. Love that. Oh, thank you, Cullen. Very good. Thanks for getting us some bloodstone. <laughs> He's very useful, this one. Um, do we have... We've got Red Jenny and the bad goods. And I think we were going to send Leliana on this one. Um, this was... Yeah, if their stock happens to be mostly weapons, they won't last long. We read this one, so it's like, we'll uh, distract them a bit. If they're carrying mostly weapons, and they're not good people, they will perish. If, uh, you know, it's a trade caravan, they'll last. Imagine if they were a genuine trade caravan that, like, planned out the very specific straight shot journey. And we're like, okay, we have exactly the amount of supplies to get us there. If anything goes wrong, we're screwed. <laughs> Let's see what we have. Let's hope that's not the case. They're like, ah, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll not make it if there is but one delay. <laughs> All right, we'll send Liliana out that way. I don't think we have any other missions. We're still focusing on uh, companion quests at the moment before we head into uh, the next main mission. Yeah, it looks like it's just it's just resources time. So we'll, we'll chuck them, chuck them out. I don't really need some, I don't really need coin. I'm not sure what resources I specifically need even, you know? It always, it's kind of interesting when you get to this point because you go, huh, what do I even need? All right. Especially when um, <laughs> you have no that operations left. There's probably some people that we could talk to out in the wild that could give us some operations because that happens a lot, depending on who we speak to. Got a throne accessory, which is nice. I'm almost Inquisition level 10. I'm going to put this ornate Bianca grip on said Bianca. Oh, actually, maybe I'll talk to Varric as well. I don't know if he'll address... 
the situation now that we've completed the operation, but we could always try. Scalding. No fun. Uh, I think. Do I have to? I have to craft the grip. Um. So an ornate Bianca grip. Oh, I've already got a masterwork one. I don't even think I've crafted this grip. So I think this has gone unnoticed, unfortunately, because what have you got? You've got, yeah, no aiming, no grip, just the Bianca Arms 3. So I haven't even crafted um, the masterwork grip. <laughs> Silly me. And aiming as well. For some reason, I thought that the blue was that you'd already crafted it before, but I actually think the blue, yeah, the blue is just the masterwork or like the higher tier. Oopsie. I made a mistake, but that's okay. Uh, let's craft this stuff. So critical chance, critical damage bonus. Um, 28 armor penetration with them dragon scales. It's like every time I see something that's like the higher tier weapons, I'm like, Ooh. Should come back with some snoofler skin. Uh, I'll go for the rough, actually, quillback leather for the critical damage bonus. Deadly aim. And then I guess we'll go for the masterwork grip instead. Um, I don't, I don't really see what strength is going to do for Varric. So I might just go for Constitution instead. It's the highest Constitution I can get. Twelve. Go for 12 constitution. Enduring enhanced grip. And then we'll chuck these bad boys on. Barracks little crossbow. So we can actually max it out this time. I've been able to do this the whole time. Silly me. There you go. The Bianca Arms number three is what gives you nine attack, extra damage. Yeah, that's good. That's good stuff. Gotcha. Nice. All right. I might do a quick spot of inventory management because we've got a bunch of stuff. And then we'll see if we, if Varric has anything to say about the operation we've just done for him. Let's have a chat to Varric. Something you wanted to talk about? Um, apparently not. Can I ask you something, Varric? You want to talk about me? <laughs> I'm flattered. Also inclined toward extravagant lies. Thanks, Varric. No problem. Nothing about the heart in Hightown thing. It was, it was worth a shot. You never know. Um, what if we fucked around and spoke to Vivian. Let's see if Vivian has anything new. It's a noble calling, the Night Enchanter. You have joined the ranks of the most select mages. You should be commended. So few have the discipline necessary. I love that you can be like, you're a Night Enchanter, like you're just clueless. I didn't realize you were a Night Enchanter, Vivienne. Of course I am, darling. Night Enchanters serve in the highest echelons of the Chantry and Circle. Where else would I be? We are the best. It was an easy decision to join the finest mages in Thedas. It always is, my dear. But not everyone can manage it. That's it. Good talk. <laughs> Just another one of those situations where it's like, yeah, woo, good talk. Another, oh, just another great conversation with Viv. It's like, yes, you're a night nice enchanter now. Now scurry off, dear. I want nothing else to do with you. Lest I move the furniture once more. Um, okay, fucking video game. Is this... I got it. 
but also why? And also, there's one in a room that I can't get into. Terrible. Awful. I hate how this, these have been scattered everywhere. I wish that I found this quest before I'd even explored uh, Skyhold <laughs> just once. Because now it's just like... God damn it. And I want to get like back up here, but I don't think I can. And I've already examined this before. But for some reason, it lets me examine it again. Well, that's, that's all that's going on there. Nothing amazing. So we're going to the world map, and as usual, there's a lot to do. Now, we haven't really, we haven't been to the Hissing Wastes at all. Um, we haven't been back to the Western Approach in a while. I think we have enough shards to open the final door on one of the sides of the thingies. You know, stuff with the shard doors. Uh, we haven't been to the Emerald Graves. We haven't been to Empriest Julian. Uh, we were going to be doing stuff in the Storm Coast before we got interrupted by demands of the Kuhn. So I might just commit to doing that again. God, I forget about Dorian's card. Creeps me out. Um, and who was I taking with me? Oh, dude. Wow, so Bull's changed and he's got the horn that he used to save his friends, but he has the blood of the canary on his hands. Yeesh. That is not nice. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to bring Varric along for the Red Lyrium. I've got Iron Bull as my warrior. And for my mage, um, I will bring Lyrium. Alright. Ease. I think we had Sarah. No, we had we brought Varric last time. This was the same trio we brought last time. And then demands of the Kuhn happened. Because Varric was standing there. I remember. So this is our group. Inquisitor. I, I caught her while she was crouching. Caught her slacking. Uh so yeah, last time we came here, you know, in the last episode. Um they really were just like, yeah, let's have this Dreadnought roll in, and then three mages just kind of breathed in its general direction and it blew up. Which was pretty crazy. Hey, is this a logging stand? Oh my god, it is. Guys, I've successfully identified a logging stand from a distance. I'm in um, incredible. I think I'm finally good at this game. And now th identify logging stands. That's when you know that you've come so far. So we've hypothesized, theorized, assumed uh, that this place may be open to traverse now with the red lyrium inside because uh, we came here last time and it was uh, closed. Couldn't get through. Um, but because there's a Red Templar related quest there now, I think it might be open and it was just the game that was preventing us from like going into like future story stuff and uh, look at, look out at here. Who are these people? Are they friend or foe? Oh, they're, they're friends. Your worship. Okay. Is it open though? Oh, it is. There you go. There you go. It's open now. So it must have been just, you needed to tr get further into the story first. More red lyrium. It spread far from the free marches. And Varric says, oh, red Templar key found on an animal corpse. All right, picture. <sighs> Boats. Eowyn's mouth. 
What's this? Ah, it's the Black Lotus. <laughs> it's the most rare Magic the Gathering card. Is that called Black Lotus? I can't remember. One of them anyway. Oh, look at this. Good. Um, yummy. Doesn't that make you just want to eat it? All right. Let's do it. How is it that the only person to not say anything yet is Varric? Hello? Dorian and Bull have things to contribute. Varric, we're, this is your quest. Oh, my lord. Are you guys ready for a Red Templar behemoth? Behemoth? Get him! Um. Yeah, look at that fire mine in action. Let's go. Well, at least Varric will... He, he slightly approves <laughs> of us destroying Red Lyrium enemies. Okay. We, have, we need to get all these approvals on the Red Lyrium uh, to make up for the greatly <laughs> disapproves. Um with the hawk scene when he came back from the fade. Darwin's mouth. Built into the cliffs of the storm coast, the port at Darwin's mouth once connected the dwarven tigers to the waking sea. In addition to increasing trade between the dwarves and their allies in the Tevinter Imperium, direct access to the deep roads meant diplomats from Orzammar could visit the port without fear of losing their stone sense. The site thus became a popular meeting place for ambassadors of the two nations. When Darkspawn incursions forced the dwarves to retreat into Orzammar, the deep roads leading into Darwin's mouth were sealed and the port fell into disuse. At least all reputable use of the port ceased. Bandits, smugglers, and pirates are known to use the various caves along the Storm Coast, including Darwin's mouth itself, for their own gains. Now we'll go for a swim, right? Because there's swimming in this game? Oh, it's, a, it's another one of these thingies. That was outside of um, that little hideout when we saw Alistair. They call them the blind boys. Be quiet in here. Quiet as a goddamn mouse. What is going on up there? Oh, I think that's one of uh, Dorian's cool spells. Intense red lyrium. Oh, there's a lot of stuff around us right now. Summerstone. Unsigned journal. The red potion was bitter and burned my throat. It was nothing like the lyrium I know. There was a hum in my mind. A held note that seemed to course through my entire being. The power it brought was incredible. I felt as if I held all the world in my palm and I could crush it with a thought. Is this what the Maker feels? I can think of nothing else but that power now. A taste of the limitless makes it impossible for a man to be content with the ordinary. Why be what, what I am when I can be more? So he says that it's like a... A held note. Four Templars had enough to deal with before this Red Lyrium crap. Because we know that they were, you know, they they hear the the song, right? Held note though is an interesting one. I always like look for <clears throat> descriptions of the song because we do not hear it for ourselves.
Ah, oh, Solus. There's one of your thingies. Oh my god. I need my I need to come back with the egg. I won't activate that until he's here. I'll have to come back. What the fuck? Excuse me. What happened here? What's what is this? Hello? Why who who did this? Who's making who's making life size statues of people and then posing them in funny positions where they're reading with a cheese wheel? And he's got cheese. And he is on a cheese wheel. What is this game is putting cheese fucking everywhere. I've got black wall with the cheese wedge of destiny. We, I went behind that house and there was a dead body with a giant cheese wheel. You know what? I, I fucking appreciate it. I love the, the goofs, right? I love the little sillies where you put little fun stuff uh, scattered throughout your world because it, it shows a level of fun and enjoyment in the video game making process from a developer standpoint is that you they doing something just to like have fun with like let's put some uh, stupid cheese man somewhere you know and that lip uh, sorry excuse me that level of like details and adding little bits into the world i, I really appreciate because it, it it keeps the humor and this game um this series definitely is something i appreciate for its humor uh, so we've got a bunch of bodies with uh, with <laughs> fucking cheese wheels, uh, and then the the tonal shift of like clearing out the red templars while we're here as well is pretty funny. gonna annoy me to ignore that but I have to oh it's like I don't have to I think my approval with Solus is pretty good here's the thing and I, you know obviously this is the thing that annoys us about this game because I'm assuming that this is okay it would be silly for it not to be a shared frustration um, but it's just silly that you can't see an approval meter right I feel like that's got to be an oversight. I'm actually surprised. I mean, there, there might be one. Is the and... some kind of big secret? How come no Kunari I've met will explain it even slightly? It's not a secret. It's just too big for a quick chat. Tell me about the Kuhn is like saying, tell me about economics. Most Kunari know just enough to get by. It's like blind dwarves trying to figure out a dragon by touch. Only the priests really have the whole picture and they spend their whole lives figuring that crap out. Well, I'll leave them to it then. Good talk. It's like me trying to talk about economics. Um, maybe there is a mod for it that I just am not aware of, but you'd think that maybe they, there would be some sort of mod that could track the approval, at least in a basic sense. Because if the game can calculate um, approval enough to kind of affect your relationships with characters. Um, surely it's tracked in the game some way, somehow. Just needed to get over here for the, the red lyrium. Oh, I destroyed that in one combo that time. Ah, uh, all right. I reckon it. I just activate. He'll understand. He can see we're spiritually linked. He he just knows that I've done it. He's at Skyhold right now, and he's like, <gasps> someone's touched my head spiritually, you know. So he knows, and he approves in the background. Slow motion explosions. Oh, that's a nice freeze. Back me up. It was almost a nice freeze. Nice. Dorian with his spooky magic. Alright, 
Well, I've dropped down here now. How do I get, how do I get back up? A father's letter. This letter never reached its intended recipient. <clears throat> My dearest Fenella, how are you? How is your Aunt Caitlin? My dear girl would never give trouble, I hope. How are your studies? Perhaps you could read some of this letter to her to show her how much you're learning. I'm sorry to have been away for so long. I have a duty. Remember when mother was very sick and she asked you to fetch her water and you did it because you loved her? It's like that. Sometimes we have to do difficult things because they help other people that we love. <clears throat> the country is ill and I have to try and make her better. Don't worry, I'm not alone here. Now we have special medicine that will make us stronger so we can fight better. It won't be long till all the mages are all gone and we're safe again. Oh wow. Uh, I will be home soon, all my love and prayers. Father. Damn. He's like, don't worry. I've got red lyrium. I'm gonna be jacked. Surface dwarves. In Orzammar, dwarven society is divided into rigid castes with houses that compete for power and prestige, but all that is discarded when a dwarf abandons the stone for the surface. Under the open sky, everyone is equal, or so the story goes. The truth is that thousands of years of tradition are not so easily tossed aside. Even though surface dwarves are officially stripped of their caste, many maintain a hierarchy among themselves along the old caste lines. Formerly noble houses are accorded more respect than castless uh, brands who come up in search of opportunity. The poorest noble dwarf on the surface looks upon the rich lower caste dwarves with contempt. Upper class surface dwarf society is roughly divided into two camps. Kalnas, who insist on maintaining caste and rank, typically those from the noble or merchant caste families, and ascendants who believe in leaving Orzmar's traditions underground and embracing life in the sunlit world. Maintaining some tie to Orzammar was seen for generations as the only lifeline for surface dwarves, bringing surface goods to their kin underground and lyrium and metals to the surface was not only the most lucrative means of making a living, but also a sort of sacred duty as many surface dwarves willingly accepted exile and the loss of their caste to better serve their house or patron. In recent years, many surface dwarves, particularly ascendants, have branched out. They started banks, mercenary companies, and overland trade caravans. They became investors and speculators in purely surface trade. These new industries have proven tremendous sources of wealth, but are looked down upon by their more conservative kin. For less affluent surface dwarves, association with a powerful Kalna can open many doors. They can get credit with dwarven merchants and are offered work opportunities by the powerful dwarven merchants guild more readily, sometimes, than more qualified but less connected individuals. I wonder how different it is under Balin's rule. I think Balin wanted to change some things. He was the, the less conservative one. Okay. Over this side. Woven Banner Crown. Please pick this up. Thank you. There's a lot of moments where I do get really upset by the um, the looting distance to things. My place. Yeah, I could have just walked down there, but of course. Uh, jumping is the more efficient one in, in Mapo's world. In Mapo's world, jumping is law. We proceed to the, the final Lyrium spot of this one. Then there's three more out in the wild, and then we can deal with this Inquisition, um, sorry, Red Templar situation. Uh, so Varric and Bull have said something to each other. We just have to wait for the others to communicate with one another. Any time now, guys. Whenever you're ready, by the way. Feel free. There's a lot of silence here. You could fill it up. Get a bit chatty if you wanted. Okay, here we are. Hello? Bloody lonely out here, guys. You're just chilling here. Need any help? Blow you up. Oh, oh 
It's not what I wanted to do, but that's okay. Oh, he avoided the mine, you bastard. I believe we've broken the Templar's hold here. There you go. All right. How exciting. This boat still looks seaworthy. Restore the port on Storm Coast operation available. Nice. Barrack didn't approve of that red lyrium destruction. I don't think he did. Maybe it popped up below the power thing. And now we can row, row, row your boat all the way back to the surface. So they've implemented the boat rowing. Whenever I've seen a boat that I could use to get across to places, not able to use it. Sad. Just see. Um, it wasn't just. This was kind of basic, wasn't it? No uh, real story or dialogue there. Just uh, go there and kill some enemies. Row, row, row your boat back to the coast. What do we expect to find here? Oh, hang on. I'm somewhere else. <gasps> oh, oh, hang on. Aha, uh -huh. wait. This is cool. I'm on a dragon island. I thought this was just going to take us, like, would be quicker than just walking all the way out. Well, I'm assuming we're going to find the dragon of Storm Coast here, the one that flew around and was fighting that Very giant. Sorry about Hawk, Varric. <gasps> yeah, well, what can you do? Does he have any family or...? I've had to write some letters. Let's not talk about it. No. He would have written to Bethany. Maybe even the uncle. Oh, man. Also, um, I wonder what Bethany's doing. The hawk name lives on through Bethany. Look at these waves, they're fierce. I'm actually surprised that um, we came across that giant that one time that was fighting the dragon. We haven't seen him again, I don't think. Seen him. But yeah, I'm assuming that dragon that was flying around will be here. So yeah, Bull gets to Let's kill. Find the dragon. Yeah. You are far too pleased about this. Oh, invisible wall. Uh, Bull gets to kill another dragon. <laughs> That's funny. I'm assuming he will approve of the dragon kill again, maybe? I don't know if we'll get another cutscene with him. But I'm, I suppose we can check. Okay, so if you do this, you get to take the boat over to Dragon Island. So aptly named. Yeah, ironic if there wasn't a dragon here. Like, ha, fooled you. We just called it Dragon Island. And it's actually a small goblin named Steve. He just lives out in the back. He laid claim to it an age ago. Oh, too bad. There's our dragon. I think there's a big open space for a dragon to roam around in. Look at that. All right, what's this one called? Back left leg. That's a really cool name. All right, Vinsoma. Vinsoma. Oh shit, it's level 19. Um, not feeling too confident about this one, actually, guys. Okay, you know what? I actually think this is a mistake, everybody. I think that this is a bad move. <laughs> this is a bad play, everyone. I just put a barrier on the fucking dragon by accident because I pressed the wrong button. That's funny. Isn't that fun? I love that. Oh, man. All right, you're bullying me. Can you go for the actual warrior? What's happening to me? I can't move. There we go. I accidentally put myself in pause. What is... Why am I surrounded by storm? I can't get a good look at my characters. I need to 
tactical mode, barrier. Where are my where are my people? Um, there's bull. There you go. Did that work? Okay. Why isn't Dorian? Is there a reason why Dorian's not healing? Oh, he's okay. Like, is there a reason why Dorian's not healing? He's on the ground. Okay, he's just taking a nap. Why did the music go away? Barrack's still in this fight. You're a good Barrack. Look at Barrack holding the fort as the as the a true dragon champion. Uh, we're doing great. Uh, we've done we've done so much damage. We're doing so well. All right, uh, bull's dead. Somehow bull's not dead. He's dead. <laughs> oh man! Sorry, right, guys. I'll do it on my own. Okay, can you not do the shield thing? That's really rude when you do that. Dorian. Okay, Dorian's dead. <laughs> All right, level 19 dragon. How about we don't do that? How about, how about we don't mess around with the level 19 dragon? Um, how do I come back? How do I come back here? Like, I can't come back here with fast travel, unfortunately. I think that we have to just go the long way every time. Okay. You've, you've done well, everyone. Dorian's fucking dead. Dorian, wake up! Dorian! Dorian! We lost him. Sorry, guys. Dorian's dead. <laughs> God, he won't get up. Dorian, get up. Anyone have a revive spell? All right, fuck it. We, we're getting out of here. <laughs> we just got our butts kicked. That's fun. Let's travel back to <laughs> camp. All right, well, we found Dragon Island. Nothing to report, sir. Dorian, welcome back. Rest up, just to be safe. All right. Um, sorry to let you down, bull. No fucking dragons. Not today. God damn. Okay. Uh, we're gonna keep the darkspawn down. So this is a new one to do. A surprising number of darkspawn are surfacing on the storm coast, and it's up to the Inquisition to put them down. They appear to be surfacing through tunnels. If the tunnels are sealed. It should keep the dark spot underground where they belong. I might bring uh, black wall. I'm just thinking Grey Warden approval potentially. Um, we've done the Red Lyrium for Varric, so I'm actually just gonna have two warriors, two mages. You know? Welcome back, Black Wall. And uh, what else we got out here? We've got shards because there will always be shards for as long as we live. Um, and then I reckon we'll pro we're probably strong enough to deal with that rift in the bottom corner and get that landmark. I'm not sure if there's going to be any significant story content that'll come out of this, um, but hopefully there's some some party banter at the very least. How do you get your hair to do that, Dorian? With magic. With proper hygiene and grooming. Maybe all three of you should get acquainted. Ghoul. Saint Darkspawn, they're ghouls. Darkspawn on the surface. I imagine Ferelden saw more than enough of them during the blight. Blackwall does approve. I'll eat my words. Apparently the ghouls are Darkspawn. Was it ghouls? 
Okay. That's cool. Among the saddest legacies of the Fifth Blight are those poor souls who survived the Darkspawn attacks across Ferelden only to succumb to the corruption of the Blight itself. We have seen animals, birds, wolves, and even bears corrupted into mindless ruinations of their former selves, but humans are by no means immune. Those unfortunate victims not killed quickly by contact with Darkspawn blood or disease become mad with fever. Their bodies lose their hair and become misshapen with sores. In their last lucid thoughts, many speak of hearing whispered words or a song that no one else can catch. It is vital that once victims begin hearing such things, they are put out of their misery quickly and mercifully. There are stories across Ferelden of these ghouls, maddened by the corruption um, of the blight, attacking their friends and spreading the corruption further. While it is likely that the sickness will eventually kill a ghoul, the dying strength of these poor creatures makes them nearly as great a danger as the Darkspawn themselves. They are no longer our friends, our family, or our countrymen. They are victims of the Blight and must be given the same mercy as Sarian showed Andraste, a swift sword. So I was correct. Blackwall approves. We've been here so many times now because there's been two separate Grey Warden little missions here. So we're looking for a tunnel entrance. Um, well, if the ghouls were around here, I would say following that lead would be sensible, but that also takes us outside of the range. So maybe this was the start of the lead and I work my way down this way. This feels like an unnatural pathway to take, but that's all right. Something I've kind of found for the most part that it, uh, with these objectives is it gives you a wide berth, but usually the objective tends to be almost right on the money, like in the center. And I don't think I'm, yeah, look at that. Almost close to the center. This is where the dark spawn are. <laughs> So like when in doubt of like these ones that give you a region to search in, you can kind of just go straight to the center. Because here's our tunnel, I think. Look at this big boy. The one with the extra armor must lead the pack. Throw it over the fire mine. Come over here. It's, right. it's over. My fire mine was just a waste. That's fine, guys. Never mind. A nug totem, and here we go. I can actually. Can I go in? No, it's not a full thingy. Nice. So there you go. Essentially, run to the center and you'll be able to find exactly what you need. Dorian, I would prefer if you stopped referring to me as that hairy lummox. When did I do that? The tavern, the smithy, the servants. You said it to the gate guards as we left Skyhold. Hmm. That does sound like me. He goes, hey man, what do you, how do you do your hair like that? He's like, I'm not a dirty bitch. <laughs> and then he's like, and then it just continues into the same thing where he's like, why do you keep telling everyone I'm a dirty bitch? <laughs> That's so stupid. Oh my God. I love it. Okay, well we find ourselves at a cave, which goes through to the rift, but there we go. Got a Herlock Alpha taking on a bunch of spiders, which means the door will be nearby. Attacked by a bear, hello. Thanks for joining the party. Damn level two bear. Okay, 
Okay. A braid of rank. Where's our cave? Is it here? Corner? Nope. I guess I'll see the energize symbol, won't I? Um, well, it should be near the alpha. Is it this? Yum. Tunnel sealed. Blackhole does not approve of that notion, though, for some reason. All right, we got our butts kicked when we came here last time. It's time for revenge. Let's seal this thing, because there's an ocularum here, too. Oh, and one of these that I have unfortunately activated without solace. God damn it. That's fine. Measure Veil Strength Operation available, okay. He's, um... Solus is the least of my concerns from a, uh, <laughs> approval perspective. But everyone else... I think the ones that we're most likely to gain approval for is Varric, Solus, and Cassandra. But even then, we've done decisions that Cassandra is like, mm, no, thank you. that kicked out butts. A Ferelden scout hat. How am I supposed to look for shards through in this little cave? Alright. I get I guess all the caves will uh, caves all the the shards will be here. One, two There's only three deal with that. Lyrium falls through the mist. The water shone a brighter blue than the sea outside. I knew they would come soon. In the journal, journal of Molly Heslin, dated in the third year of the Dragon Age, sealed in the Kidlock Hall, the Circle Tower at Lake Callanhad when Heslin was made tranquil in the fifth year of the Dragon Age. Can't hear you over this waterfall. Uh, am I supposed to ascend the waterfall to get that shard? Oh, it's, hang on, it's right here. Have it's to do over. That. Black or we'll just call you Internet Explorer because you're a little slow. Um, and the next one is down this way. Speeders. Oh, they sound so cute, don't they? Shards collected. Okay. Oh, now I'm one shard away from unlocking that final door. I love how there's still just a dark spawn. Seals tunnel, still just dark spawn, just walking around. And there's arches and everything. It's, just, it's like, did I did I not just seal the cave? Hello? Nothing you do in this game means anything. Look at that free black wall approval. Over uh killing Darkspawn. Look at that. Glad I decided to bring him along. Smart choice, hey? Very smart choice. Um, outside of the shards and this darkspawn tunnels, I think we'll be done with uh, the storm coast, as far as I know. Nothing to report, sir. Um, actually, what might be a good idea is just quickly. Oh, yeah. so I'll do this and then I'll head to the operation table because we've unlocked 
some new operations by doing stuff in the wild. As I thought would be the case. That's the end of that. Yes. I need another logging stick. Rather slick around here. I know. Been a long time since I was at sea. Uh, can we get away from the water? I'm feeling seasick already. <laughs> look at him! Look at him saying things. What are you guys talking? Except for the bull. Bull, would you like to talk? All right, into the spider cave. The dark spawn in here. Or just deep stalkers. Cause we've been in here once before, but is there a dark spawn cave now? Yes, there is. No, with no dark spawn. <laughs> okay. Dark spawn cave with no dark spawn. I'm fine with that. Just deep stalkers instead. No more. Alright, and then if we run on down the coast here, we'll get our last one, and then I'll probably just pick up these shards, and then I think outside of a, killing a dragon... Oh. There you go. Done. That was easy. Sh just shy of leveling up. Someone help! Dark spawn caves sealed. So unfortunately, uh, these three shards are not the final three on the map, as uh, the quest tells us. There are thirteen on the coast, and uh, we obviously are missing uh, an ocularum that will reveal the rest. So that'll be. For another day <laughs> but for now storm coast is looking mighty clear we're gonna head to skyhold send some people on operations okay time to report in Red jenny's done in 20 minutes But at the very least, we can send these two on some operations, maybe. So let's have a look. We've got Measure Veil Strength and Restore the Port on Storm Coast. Inquisitor, you have activated a number of the Elven Artifacts. Oh, okay. It's tied to that. The Elven Artifacts used to detect the magical energies of the Veil individually. Such readings have been helpful. If we can coordinate measurements of all the Artifacts simultaneously, however, I believe we may be able to uncover rifts that may not have even opened yet. I have drafted a proposal for how we might use Inquisition mages across Orle and Ferelden to activate these artifacts in a coordinated fashion, if you think that might be useful. Ooh, mama, I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, Leliana is not participating. I can deploy soldiers with the mages to ensure their safety, and if the Inquisition forces are stretched thin, Nobles in the area. Driven back on the storm coast. I know, I did that. Let us pray they do not return. Uh, nobles in the area will happily ensure the safety of our mages. Uh, Kulin. To work? To work, indeed. She goes. Uh, restore the port on the storm coast. Your worship, the Red Templar's holdings on the storm coast were once a working port. If you would turn it to your own use, we may be able to assist. Ivor of the Blades. A note penned below in a different hand. We can hardly expect a bustling trade center, but since we've established a presence in both Ferelden and Orle, direct access to the Waking Sea could prove useful. Of course, the Blades of Hesarian will refuse to help unless word comes from the Herald of Andraste. Uh, we can send some of our workers to assist, and Josephine, I can arrange for additional assistance. Well, wrong Josephine. That worked out in our favor, where Leliana's not participating in either of those missions, and she's currently busy anyway. Um, so that is fine. As you were, team. Time for us to pick another destination. Um, now, world map, let's take a look. Fallow Mine is pretty small. That's just got landmarks, and there's a memory of the grey that I haven't found. Interlands is doing horse races, rifts, and ah, yes, entering Valamar with Varric. 
Crestwood has Australians landmarks, a rift, a rift. Judith the Naturalist, not checked up on, um, and it's been so long. <laughs> um, oh yes, of somewhat fallen fortune. Right, that's a mission for me to follow up with Josephine. Let's do that because we've been doing the Josephine stuff over the past few episodes, bits and pieces. So Josephine attempted to reinstate her family as a trading power in Orlais, as we know, and uh, blah, blah, blah. The rest is history. Uh, we're going to the Marquise's party. Who are we taking to a party with nobles? Do we take a chaotic party or a understandable party? All right, well, I'm taking... I'm going to take an interesting group. I'm going to take... Uh, the rich woman, <laughs> the, the one who hates the rich with people and my, my boy, I got to take him to the party as a plus one, except I've got a plus three. Do you think that's fair? A rogue and three mages walk into a party. No warriors. Give them a chance in the sunlight, Vivian and Sarah, hey? We're going to a party. Iron Bull would be great. <laughs> That's been my Val Royo squad. Such an interesting arrangement. Oh, never mind. They're just waiting outside. Well, you never know if they're going to interact or not. me in private, Minister Belize. I chastise you for taking me from the party, Inquisitor, but the Marquis throws such dull affairs, it's hardly worth it. I assume you wish to discuss your petition to elevate these du paraquettes to a minor lordship. Tell me, why should I allow you to pollute the Orlesian nobility any further than it's already been muddled? Wow. The Duparakets used to be noble. You'd be restoring an old house of Orlay. <laughs> restoring it far too late. What are the Duparakets now? Traders? Farmers? Really, it is too much. The very thought causes me pain. What can you possibly provide that will make your petition worth my effort? Uh, I guess we're trying to think uh, from the perspective of the game, right? One of these two. Diplomatic connections that reach far beyond the boundaries of Valreo, perhaps. Hmm. I might make use of your ambassador. The Montilliers aren't what they were, but at least they're from proper stock. Arrange for me to be introduced to the court of Antiva. I hear winter is most pleasant by their sea. Very well, Inquisitor. Should you fulfill this bargain, I shall raise the Duparakets into lordship. I sure do love prancing around with nobles. It's so fun. To the guillotine, with all of them. Well, we didn't even get to see the Marquis party, unfortunately. That's a shame. I arranged for a whole group and everything. I, I got them in their best outfits for the party. They didn't even show up. They had to wait outside like my dogs. That sucks. <laughs> I love that I... Like, even when you go to places on your own, the game's like, choose your party. I must return to Valroyo to see that everything is in order. Please join me when you can. Okay. Done. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's just like... I always entertain the notion of forming a party when we go somewhere just in case. But it never really works out. Because they haven't really even said anything. I'm going to try again.
Maybe if I just stand still in Valrio for a few minutes, they'll say something, but, you know. What can you do? You're a mage, not my patron. I've no reason to be polite to you. Your patron is my patron, and he tasked you to accompany me. <laughs> to report should any Templars attack you, not cater to your every whim. Did someone just walk into a wall? Someone absolutely just walked into this wall. Am I, am I seeing things now? Am I insane? I swear there was an NPC and they just disappeared into a wall. I'm not crazy. Chill. He doesn't think that we're watching him. We've just stood to take a breath of fresh air. Sarah, stop making it obvious. I watch to see if they have secret walls in this place. Where is he going? See if he uses the secret wall we're watching. What? Okay, mate. Okay, mate. How is that possible? How are you skinny enough to walk through that and I can't follow? <gasps> There's suspicious characters afoot here. Oh, ah, ah, do you see that? He went to go walk into the wall, but he saw that we were watching and stopped. Vivian, that's not a good hiding spot, babe. I'm on to this guy. He... How does he shrink down to such a size when he can squeeze through the gate? He was about to go through the wall. As soon as he heard footsteps, he cancelled out the whole platform nine and three quarters thing. I don't know, man. All right, Josephine. You are busy? Are you free? Shall we talk? I received a letter from the House of Repose, Your Worship. They acknowledge their contract is null and void. There is no longer a price on my life. I'm glad you don't have to live your life looking over your shoulder anymore. I regret we were forced to deal with them. That you are endangered by my part in the game. Did I ever mention I used to be a bard? You were a singer? Bards entertain the Orlesian courts. They sing, play music, make charming conversation, and spy. Many young nobles put on a mask and practice playing the game in such a fashion. Liliana and Josephine, both with the bard history, huh? What made you interested in becoming a bard? I was attending a university in Valroyo when I learned about bards. There was such an air of romance about them. Stories of secrets, trysts, and fascinating people. A group of us, young gentry from Antiva, decided this exciting life was for us. I think if I wasn't pursuing a romance path with Solus right now, I think I'd be inclined. Inclined is the wrong word. I think I'd be more interested in uh, Josephine, which is kind of interesting because not really my type. I don't know. There's just something about it. There's just something about it, dude. Something about it, man. It's not a money, okay? Actually, I think it's her voice. I think she just has a really nice voice. And like sometimes, like I think it's the only, almost the only Orlesian accent in the game that is also tolerable, I think. Like a lot of them I kind of, um, it can be a little bit annoying to listen to. Um, but I think Josephine's voice is just really nice to listen to. It's probably that. If you got a nice voice, you're already one step ahead of everybody else, you know? And that's why we all love Garrus. He's just smooth with that voice. And Varric. But we can't romance Varric. <laughs> I can't imagine you doing that so weird. You seem a bit... steady for such an outgoing lifestyle. <laughs> the life of an entertainer didn't suit me at all. 
During one particular intrigue, I encountered the bard sent to kill my patron. We fought. Or perhaps scrapped is the better word. Both of us terrified. We were at the top of a steep flight of stairs. The other bard threw a knife and I pushed him away from me. You can imagine the result. Wow. I'm just imagining like Josephine in my party as like a bard. You've drawn a clear enough picture. But it was such a waste, Inquisitor. When I took off his mask, I knew him. We'd attended parties together. If I'd stopped to reason, if I'd used my voice instead of scuffling like a common thug, I'll always wonder who that young man would have grown into. He seemed willing enough to murder you for the game. Perhaps. I feel I'm the last to judge whether or not he would have actually used the blade. In all the commotion... Uh, forgive me, I don't believe I ever thanked you for helping me with this. Hold on to it. Don't lose sight of why you came here. I will never forget you helped save the House of Montillier, Inquisitor. And should you ever visit Antiva, stories of the welcome we'll give you will be told for years. That's because she's not Orlesian, is she? She's Antiva. Because she sounds similar to Zevran. I think I've just, because of her association with everything Orle, I think my brain just put her there. But as soon as she said that, yeah, I'm, she was educated in Valrio. As soon as she said that, I went, oh, she doesn't even sound Orlesian. She sounds Antiven, just like Zevran. <laughs> so... <laughs> Silly me. Sorry, I don't have every single word of all of the lore of Dragon Age and everyone's backgrounds in my brain at all times, all right? Sometimes I got to shuffle around in the back and, and, you know, I'm throwing some garbage out there and I'm like, I don't need this, I don't need that. Uh, where's Josephine from? All right, Antiva. I, you know, I wish that I could, you know, you know that movie Limitless? You got that, like, drug that allows you to use 100% of your brain? Uh, I would. I wish I could 100% my brain to Dragon Age, but unfortunately, you know, I can't. I will make. I will make mistakes, and sometimes things will go in one ear and out the other. But like, I do put in genuine effort. I promise. <laughs> um, Antiva. And you know what? It's her voice. Maybe that's why I like her, because it's that Antivan uh, smooth talking. Because um, Zevran's just like that as well. Just so funny. He was such a pleasant um, Dragon Age 2 appearance as well. That was so funny. All right. I'll just put that in my brain. Josephine is Antivan. But yeah, you can see, I think my confusion is understandable. She's associated with so much Orlesian stuff that my brain went, yeah, Orlesian. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, and I think I'm also, you know, Leliana was the one who spent a lot of time over there as well. Um, okay, that is done. That's complete. Um, there's the Lost Temple of Dirthamon, which we can travel to. Um, let's just do it. Let's just let's just travel here. Let's just cross this one up the map as well. I can't remember what we're doing here. I'm not able to pick a party. I'm just automatically going here. So here we go. I was expecting to pick a party. Oh, it's my same party. That's weird. Um, can I change my party? Because I wanted different people. How weird, right? Isn't that really strange? Um, I guess I'll go back to Skyhold first. And then I'll leave. And then I'll go back. And then I'll change my party. Because I wanted to have Solus here. Because this is uh, Elven related. I'm not going to bring Sarah. Because Sarah doesn't care. <laughs> Too scary for her. Alright, um, at least we can leave. If I was locked in there, I'd be a little bit annoyed. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to bring you, you, and I need a warrior, and I'll bring you. Okay. Cole, Solus, and Cassandra. Let's take a look. So, God of Secrets, investigate the area. Oh, God. Hello? Killian's reading of the glyphs have revealed the location of the Lost Temple of Dearthmen. Who knows what secrets this ancient elven ruin may hold? Okay. We got stuff. We got stuff to do. Now, you better, you better say things, right? Because I keep taking you to places, and you keep saying nothing. You know? God damn it. Someone's been here, and never left. I keep, I keep bringing him out for the Elven Law. I'll be rubbing his bald head for luck for the Elven Law, and he's shafting me. Explorers in the temple. This small book appears to be a collection of notes, judging by their dates, written over a period of three years. They chronicle the search for something called Dearthman's Wisdom by an Orlesian archivist, Lord Grecian Fall. Fall? 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 There's so much Orlesian in this game, and I'm so bad at pronouncing French stuff. The elven god of secrets disappeared along with all his kin, or so their legends claim. Yet his priesthood remained behind, and the priests were said to possess the ability to see and know all. I believe this to be the result of magic and not a divine gift. Magic locked in treasures that remain to this day. With the aid of my companions, I hope to prove it. I believe I have found a temple of Dearthman, the resting place for the wisdom, or at least the location of the last high priest who is said to possess it. From all I have gathered, it might be possible to summon this high priest's spirit from the ether here in this place. Impossible? Yet Dearthman's rituals will evidently allow it. Perhaps one of the older secrets we know of will be revealed to us here. Alright, we're going swimming. Path of Shadows. Ooh. Ooh. And then we've got to investigate glyphs. Lost Temple of Dearthman. Veilfire runes found. Okay, we few whisper here where shadow dwells. Some words remain uttered. Truths are pushed down, down where they shall never arise again. It's strange that I can understand that. The secrets of this temple have remained unspoken for too long. They wish to be known. The secrets wish to be known and therefore I am allowed to read it. Okay, this is all very positive. Chamber of Misery. Take the head of misery. All right, everything. Everyone's so happy in here. That's good. The earth is absorbing the fire, eating the magic. Okay. It's alive. It is alive, because the creature connected to it is alive. It is but one piece of the whole. Oh. <gasps> this happened in Dragon Age Origins. Remember when there was like the quest that took place over like fucking ages and you were finding bits and pieces of a corpse and you put it back together again and a pride demon came out? We let it live from <laughs> for a reward actually. Which was out of character. I don't know, I was in a silly, goofy mood that day. Um, but I remember that quest, because there was like the whole thing with the codex entries. Uh, they were like forced to separate the bodies and the pieces, and we put it back together for fun. It's never not going to bug me when you light a torch with a veil fire torch and it just is regular fire. It feels illegal. The whispers are louder in there. I can see them. You can see the whispers. Yes. No way through this gate. Wonder what it's made of. 
Can you just open the gate from the other side or something? Be like a spirit for a sec. Walk through walls. Um, <coughs> coal was a good choice to bring. I mean, I think it's pretty clear sometimes when you go somewhere who would be better choices to bring. I mean, everyone's a good choice for most things, but sometimes you're just like, this is the best choice. And the torch goes out. Oh, hmm. Okay, well, what do you want me to do about that? Explorers in the temple, a number of notes are scribbled on this scroll. Many crossed out were written in terse, angry letters. Reveal the heart, unite it with the flame. Together they will form the key to liberation? Advancement? The translation is not clear. I do not think this brazier is the flame it speaks of. Strange. So I need veil fire, but... have a problem. Oh. Oh, we no longer have a problem. Okay, I guess I'll go back to the Veil Fire. Because there is not one nearby. Back here. Carry it with me. Tongue of Whispers. Holding my staff and the Veilfire torch for a second there. Ah. Anyone else want to take this for me? Is he? Holding the torch. Yeah, a mosaic piece. A dead jester. Explorers in the temple. They came for me in the night, but I won't let them take it. I'll find Earthman's wisdom on my own. Those traders want riches for themselves. They won't have a clue how to decipher the remainder of the ritual. Let it be known that I, Lord Grecian Foal, am not to blame for what befalls them. I'm not to blame for any of this. Another one of the explorers. He hid here. He died afraid. Nice. Okay, mate. You don't have to go invisible. That's cool. Really nice, like, little art stuff that gets, like, tucked in here. Like, a lot of effort goes into, like, yeah, the art direction in a lot of the details in the world. It's really well done. Sanctuary. Okay. Okay. Another water situation going on here. This human was a warrior, dead for perhaps a few months. His skin is dried and stretched over his bones. For what you can tell of the corpse, he was stabbed in the back. An expression of terror remains locked in the rictus of the dead man's face. One of the explorers from the camp. Where are the rest of them? Oh. Hang on. I forgot something. I forgot the elven rune in that room with the tongue. I totally only focused on the, um, on that piece. I gotta go back. I'm missing something. Silly old me. Lost Temple of Deathman. Deathman is gone, he said. Our highest ones bring up to us this gravest news. What shall we do? Where shall we go? What of the old secrets that burn within our hearts?
Isn't that the name of the... Isn't that the name of the quest? In your heart shall burn. I love that the game does that. When you when you look in your completed quests and click on it, it will do that for some reason. In your heart shall burn. Seems like eerily similar to that. Ornate Elven Key, sure. Magically sealed? Sure. Can we unmagically seal it? I've got two mages and a spirit with me. Explorers in the temple. I don't care what Lord Greshian claims. There were voices last night whispering to us in our sleep. It is not silly fears. It is this place. Is it worth finding this artifact if he hunts us? It... No, is it worth finding this artifact he hunts if it attracts spirits to us as we search? And how do the spirits know our names? They knew personal things, events I would rather forget. I would leave if it don't me did not mean foregoing my entire pay after months of work. At that point, it's like, do you live, do you leave with your life? Or risk losing money? Our highest one, he deceives us. The honeyed words that drip from his tongue, we know the despair they mask. We disciples of Dirthman know truth now as ever. Our highest one, he deceives us. Wow, okay. I'm glad that I've got one of each. Where are you? Where? What the fuck? You guys were just waiting outside? I'm glad that I brought a balanced team. Thank you, Cole. Chamber of Torment. God, I'd have to come back if I didn't have a rogue. Oh, you guys fired him. I'll stand here. I'll look around. Yeah, see, I got stuff to do. The highest one promises safety. I shall protect our ancient secrets. He claims all of Dirthman once granted us will be safe. But it is our blood he seeks. A sacrifice dark and unholy. A prison of evil to keep us in and all else out. Is it, this, this is all talking about the, the Dreadwolf? Like sealing, like the people in. Um... Ah, oh, nice. I got the key. One of the passages back in the ritual area, perhaps. Oh, I don't think I needed call after all, because I think if I just went the other way, I could open this. Yeah, is are they talking about um, the dreadwolf? Has he tricked everyone? He's like, ha ha. Oh shit. Damn it. Is he, yeah, he, he tricked everyone. He went, he he, go here. And then he went to the other people, he he, go here. And then he said, oh shit, hello. And then he trapped him. Ah! You're just chilling out here? Gotta go get my light again. Wait, yeah. It's, at least this area isn't too large. Well, where the fuck did I come from?
It would constantly be the Veil Fire Carrier over here. My Olympic Torch. So I think the the limbs are the quest things, but the the runes are the actual optional things that we're getting these entries for, because they're not tied to quests. I don't think. Hard and Hightown Chapter Seven. What's that doing here? Donan Brenokovic searched Comte Favre's office. The Comte lay dead, murdered, while armed and barricaded inside his own home. The servants' room were all empty, and from the pulled-out drawers and abandoned trunks, they had been sent away in a hurry. The Comte had clearly expected trouble, and trouble had come to call. The Comte kept all of his letters, decades of correspondence sorted by, apparently, Kingdom of Origin, filled in his writing desk. Don and rummaged through them, looking for darker ink, fresher pages, anything that might indicate that it was recent. And then came the shattering sound of someone kicking in the front door. Hey, me lord fancy pants, get your ass down here. Jevelyn and Donnan ran for the foyer. A woman stood over the splintered door, her eyes glittering brighter than the daggers in her hand. You there, she snapped at the guardsman. Where's the comte to full of it? We need to have some words. One of them will be coin, and the other will be now. Kirkwall guard, Donnan barked back at her. This is a crime scene. Identify yourself. Guards, are you? She smirked, squinting up into the dark towards him. No suits of armor outside. Man poking around a noble's house in the dark. This does look like a crime scene. Donnan didn't flinch. Your name? Belladonna. Captain Belladonna of the Dragon's Jewels. She executed a florid bow that somehow managed to be insulting. Where's the damned Comte? <laughs> He's dead, Donnan said, watching her reaction. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? She cracked a wry smile. Trust me, sweet thing. If I were going to kill him, I'd have waited until he paid me first. What was your business with the Comte? Jevelyn spoke up, startling Donnan. He'd almost forgotten his partner was there. Cargo transport. She glowered at the recruit. He hired me to deliver some antiques, and I've been sitting at anchor for a fortnight without being paid. She peered up into the dark balconies overhanging the foyer and shouted, Anybody here? You want this rubbish? Come to the docks tonight and pay me 50 sovereigns for it. Otherwise, I'm dumping it in the sea. With that, she turned on her heel and strode away. Captain Belladonna. We know this person, right? Do we know this person? Because I, I feel like... I feel like with the way that Varric writes his books, they're like about people, but with different names, I feel, because Swords and Shields has Aveline on the cover. I guess we haven't read that, so we don't know. Is, is, is Isabel's last name Belladonna? And, or like, because it wouldn't be Isabella Donna. <laughs> Uh, it it comes across this that as it's an Isabel reference. I don't know. That's what comes to mind. Especially with the whole daggers routine. I don't know the whole attitude there. Because Donnan could be Donic, you know that sort of thing that I got confused on. The other side here. Oh, hang on. There's an ain't. Oh, yes, because I had a key, right? Ancient door. Got that key now. So this is where the key leads. Hmm. Oh, I 
nice to have another one. Call to open. Oh, nice. There he The Lost Temple of Dearthman. We will not have it. We will not have it. The secrets are madness in our ears, but they are ours. The highest one cannot take them from us. Only Dearthman, our keeper. Only he. And if he does not take the secrets, they are ours forever. Hey, nice. Got like a little checkpoint. My veil fire. Despondency. The Chamber of Despondency. Just looking for runes. For his heart, for his heart, our highest one is bound. The secret that he keeps, he keeps with us. The vigil that he keeps, he keeps with us. His fear will not weaken us. No one shall come, dear mentor. In our eternity, only darkness reigns. Okay, so hang on. They're saying that the highest one is bound. So I don't think they're talking about the Dreadwolf. They're talking about something that they have, like, separated. So someone that's bound. And guess what we're doing? Only just putting it together again. That seems like a fucking... Really great idea, guys. It's too long to get out of combat sometimes. I'm like, please just let me pick my torch back. Okay, so we opened a door that just takes us back out that way. There's a gate back here for coal to open. I think we went down there yet. Yeah, because that takes us there. And then we've got this one. Which I think is like once we've found all of the pieces. Still need to find more of the glyphs, I think. Okay. Nothing much in there. opportunity. Oh, uh, where'd my torch go? That's fine. Just lit a new brazier, so that's fine. Aha, uh -huh, there's a glyph in here. I hear the whisper. This one was tied to needing a warrior. Oh, one more. 
They will come for us in the night, those who would steal the words from our lips, and our God no longer rises to our defense. We claw at the walls, at the walls, now we pray for a dawn that will never arrive. Uh, where'd my torch go? Okay, it's just gone now. Cool. It's not like I wanted that anyway. Ears of unheeding. There we go. Alright, now I need to find one more rune. God, that could be anywhere now, depending on where I've missed it. a fire mine right on them is great. Oh, there it is. Um, is this going to run out? Watch me, look. Watch me go through the gap. Fuck you, video game. I went through the gap. <laughs> you fuck. Okay. So I need to get to this last rune. I need to get this water not happening. We need another artifact. A path of secrets. Excellent. The wards are functioning again. Okay. I guess we're going this way to look for Veilfire. took so long for that slight approval, man. Alright, I found the last glyph, so that's a load off. Now we can go to the center and see what this uh, tire one's all about. Yes! His mind which cannot think, his tongue which cannot speak, his hands which cannot touch, his ears which cannot hear, his eyes which cannot see, and thus shall our highest one be bound. He shall join us in our silence. And then the Inquisitor went, huh? <laughs> Let's play Lego. We're gonna put it back together again. Let's play Cursed Lego. It'll be fun, guys, I promise. Right, so we'll go in here. Be prepared. Oh, now we gotta place them all. Okay. This is fucking spooky, dude. Oh, wow. That's so cool. So beautiful, yet so sponky. Explorers in the temple. A series of papers and notes are stuffed into a small booklet. It is stained with dried blood and covered in dust. The most legible entry is the last. We're still not certain why Lord Gresham ran off during the night. The others think it's the nightmares, though they say it's voices that speak to them. We took a vote and decided to continue the search for Dertherman's wisdom. If we don't, we forfeit everything we've worked towards. Trying to piece together all of Gresham's notes won't be easy. All I can think is that we need to play, put the relics revealed by the braziers into these flames. It's all part of some elven ritual, I suppose. The only gruesome part is all these desiccated organs. Lord Gresham believed they were part of the high priest of this temple, and that we're somehow reassembling him. I find it unsettling that the elves would have disassembled their high priest in the first place. Now we did something with a whole bag of corpses on an altar in Dragon Age Origins, so this is not the same, but... I recommend caution. There is no telling where this ancient ritual will lead us. Okay. Well, you know me. I'm the most cautious person you've ever met. Oh, okay. 
Well, it's like rift magic. Through one of these. It's a despair demon. Oh, okay. That's kind of a... Uh, that's a letdown. <laughs> They're like, yeah, woo, despair demon. I was expecting like a badass cutscene, but that's fine. We can't all have what we want, <laughs> I suppose. I was waiting for like some cool badass like elven spirit to appear before us and start speaking some ancient elven that wouldn't be translated. And no, that's okay. It's a despair demon. Yay! Why a despair demon? The heart of this place. Here is where the ancient rituals and prayers. Oh, place. there's an there's a door. Hang on, there is a door to open here as well. Okay. I mean, to be fair, the highest one is pretty strong. It's much stronger than a despair demon, but it uses the body of a despair demon. No match for all of my fiery powers. Summons the highest one just to so destroy it. Priest of the temple. Imprisoned in silence and despair by his own followers. A sad legacy. Hmm. Okay. Nothing to loot on the on the body there. Now we can open the chamber of the oracle. Okay. What's in here? Magical chest. Earthman's wisdom shield. This may prove useful. Okay. Let's have a look, shall we? Um, definitely not what I was expecting, but it's okay. God, I like some dialogue, or maybe a cutscene would be cool. But maybe it's just it. it the spirit has been trapped for so long it only knows despair, and therefore that is what it appears as. This shield's power has kept it whole after a thousand years. It might even have saved the entire Temple of Dirthman from decay. It held special significance to the elven priests, perhaps allowing communion with the God of Secrets himself. Cool. Alright, well, um, I don't think there's anything left to do here. We got the runes, we got the secrets, we defeated the demon, we opened up some secret little doors with coal and bashed open a wall with... Cassandra, I think we can get out of here. Except I can't access the world map, so I think I have to actually leave manually, which is quite interesting. Maybe there's a reason we can't fast travel. Something to happen? Maybe? Or am I just... have to leave manually? I don't think there's anything else for me to acquire. So I guess we'll leave and we'll go back to Skyhold. You ever try to leave and then you get like ambushed by Red Templars? That's weird. No commentary on that? Okay. We got some stuff though. Weird. We, were we followed by the Red Templar menace? We can come back here, maybe. Strange. All right, back to Skyhold after a weird encounter with some Red Templars at the end. Not sure what to make of that. Just randomly popped in and appeared. Um, 
Oh, I f ah, my ankle. I might talk to Solus again. Let's see if he's got any updates. I know sometimes when you do stuff, you're like, you guys got anything to say about what we just you know went through? Hello. Hello. I need to know more about Corypheus. They've taken his army. He lacks the conventional forces to take Orlay. He must see Orlay destroyed utterly by whatever means possible, not merely thrown into chaos. We'll talk later. Dareth Shira. You don't want to talk about the, the cool elven, ancient elven temple we went to? That's fine. Your worship. That's fine. I just wanted to talk, but that's okay. All right, operation time. As usual, we've got some operations that are ready. Send them off, except for the ones that's on a. I think Cullen's on a 15 hour mission now. Ooh, I have an Inquisition perk. Um, let's see. One combat ability point. One more potion slot for all party members, which would actually be pretty damn useful for like a regeneration potion or like grenade. Um, then also dialogue entries, you know? Dialogue entries are important, dude. All party members gain a 10% increase to all defenses as well. That's important. Many mages from all over Thetis have joined the Inquisition. Reverse engineering their robes and stave. New rare schematics. Oh, schematics for different groups. Oh, they're all quite good, aren't they? I'm going to give everyone 10% defense increase. Your worship, work on the port is underway. We trust you'll be pleased with the results. And the caravan we misled into the mountains surrendered after their food ran out. Their supplies of weapons and armor were ill-suited to survival. While their intended benefactors remain unknown, we have assuredly denied them, thanks to Sarah's friends. Nice. A trouble of Red Jennies. I will never understand how they function with the same name. A memo from Leliana... Have you had any trouble with them? Not at all. I will inform you if that changes. A memo from Liliana written on a letter from Sarah. Sometimes we trade off baddies. Some knob learns your tricks. Message another red Jenny. Now you're twice as hard to catch. Looks like magic, except no demons and no magic, I suppose. Anyway, the caravan we took over. There's two leads on that from two other Jennies. Good ones, too. Simple sketches of the other red Jennies and their locations are scribbled below. Their moustaches seem improbable. Improbable. Navara Johi and Tantavale Charade. Funded from Tantavale, they may be open to an alliance after the trouble in Kirkwall and supplied from the Vara. I can leverage the Pentagast name to manipulate to a degree, but perhaps we needn't mention it to Cassandra. Ooh, okay, we have a choice between Navara and Tantavale. Well, they're both good leads, apparently. We'll go with Liliana. Inquisitor. I know. It doesn't really seem like an obvious choice there, so we'll just we'll go with that one. And um, I don't think we have any other missions right now, so. At your service. Off you go. Off you go. And that will bring this episode of Dragon Age Inquisition to a close. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed our journey through some new areas, uh, working on these companion quests, getting them done. I think next time we'll travel to Valamar with uh, with Varric. I think that'll be that'll be a good one. We've got an amulet of power, and I believe the amulet of power. Yeah, they're ones that can only be used. So we have you find them throughout the game. We've got a couple of these already, and you can only use it on the one character. The interesting part about this is it un unequips whatever they had on before, which is very interesting. So you got to remember what they had. So give them their ability points. And then the episode is now over. Next time we'll check in with more companion quests because there's a lot of them. It's kind of hard to juggle things like because this game has so like it's got its main quests. Then it has so many 
side quests, things out in the field to do. And then it's also got just an abundance of companion quests, which I really like. So we're focusing on our friends right now, we're making sure their needs are tended to uh, before we proceed because they're all sort of going, I will stand with you. And that feels like an important thing to make sure everybody will, you know, be by our side. It feels very Mass Effect 2 in terms of the loyalty missions for like leading up to, you know, that final assault, the, the suicide mission. So I feel like I need everyone to be like, I will be with you. It gives me that exact same sort of vibe. Uh, so we'll continue doing that next time. I'll see you then.